point. There we go. Okay, um, so there was a, uh, at August, um, the PURE trial came out at the European Society of Cardiology, and there was just a, a whole lot of stuff going on with that because uh, there, this was a group getting up and saying that fats and carbohydrates uh, are, are really, uh, that we have it all wrong. We've been telling people for decades to do a low-fat diet, and all they did was substitute it with carbohydrates, and the weight went up. Mostly true um, in the United States. <coughs> but the PURE trial, as you can see in the title, did 18 countries, five continents, and did a prospective collecting data, uh, but they did the collection at the beginning and then see what happens to people thereafter. And what they actually showed is that if you substitute carbohydrate uh, with fat, that you actually lowered the mortality, that fat was safer. And so we should not be telling people, they thought, to do a low-fat diet. You should be doing, you know, getting rid of, do a low-carbohydrate. So all of the paleo people and the Atkins people, they were all just completely thrilled about this uh, because they thought that they had been vindicated. Um, they got even refined it more, that is, replacement of carbohydrates with polyunsaturated uh, acids actually improved things as opposed to, uh, you know, saturated fat, monounsaturated fat, um, where it didn't really see much change with carbohydrates. What they didn't really talk about, though, was the fact that the carbohydrates in the PURE trial were refined carbohydrates. So what the PURE trial was saying wasn't novel. It was saying the same thing that we've been saying. It's saying that same, remember the 1.17 versus 1.22 in the nurse's health study? It's saying the same thing. If you're going to have your carbohydrates be sugar, white rice, uh, refined grains, you're going to increase your cardiovascular mortality, and anything you do is probably going to make it look, be, look better. And in this case, they were looking at fat. Doesn't mean fat is good for you. It just means that the sugar and the refined carbohydrates are bad for you. Okay? Okay. I'm going to spend a little time talking about the um, politics, business, health uh, issues because there are a lot of them. A lot of them were addressed last night and throughout this entire um, uh, conference. And I, I have to admit, I wasn't paying much attention to this until um, a, when I was president of ACC and we were putting on um, uh, a preventive health, population health symposium. This gentleman actually showed up, uh, Earl Blumenauer. Anybody here from Oregon? Probably not. <laughs> oh, we do? How, how about? So, well, if you, could, if you go back home and vote for this guy, he's, he's, he's got his head on straight. He came up to me and said, how can the American College of Cardiology help us get rid of the uh, subsidies, the farm subsidies for production of damaging things such as high fructose corn syrup? Uh, before that, I just wasn't aware of it. I looked it up, and sure enough, you're spending billions of dollars of our tax money to make things that are then going to hurt our health. And so I, I'm sure they end up in you know, different kinds of political baskets, and uh, it, there are articles written about it, that subs subsidy of the uh, subsidizing the junk food industry. <sighs> Not something that we need to be doing. Um, and if you look at it carefully, it's a lot of money. And it's only about 14, you know, if you look at what's, what's actually being uh, subsidized, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, corn starch, uh, vegetable shortening, uh, what does it remind you of? Hostess Twinkies, right? Okay, so let's have a little fun with Twinkies, <laughs> okay? All right, so I don't know how many of you are addicted to Twinkies. I don't want to know, I don't want to know. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting that uh, they go on some people's vegetarian diets because you know, they're, they're, not, they, they're not meat. Um, they're incredibly inexpensive. So a package of 10 for $2.64, and that's because of the subsidies. It's made up of almost fully ingredients that are subsidized. How about that? So if you Google it, or in this case, Wikipedia, you find out some fancy things about it. You can fry them. You could split them in half and put a hot dog in between. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> and so it's time for your Twinkie quiz. All right, so how many calories are in that package of 10 Twinkies, okay? 500, 1,000, 
1,500. So it's actually, so they're not vegan? They're What's, not vegan. Well, be, because? So what kind of? The cream is made from gelatin. Oh, okay. So it's zero cholesterol, but not vegan. All right, thank you for that. All right. I see it in the shape of a coffin. I like that. <laughs> I got to use that one next time. All right, so the answer was 1,500. Okay, all right, so now we'll test your vegan knowledge. How much spinach would you have to eat to consume 1,500 calories? Okay. Is it five pounds? Ten pounds? Fifteen pounds? <laughs> it's actually 15 pounds uh, of spinach is what you would need to, to actually have uh, that many calories. Um, so, uh, I haven't talked about it too much, but we, we have had... Uh, uh, you know, so some push uh, by healthcare organizations to do sugar sweetened beverage taxes. There's actually, uh, believe it or not, randomized trial evidence that it works to change people's uh, uh, habits and how much they're buying. And the more you tax the unhealthy things, the better off uh, folks are. And so in Cook County, we thought we had this. We were going to take care of people with the money. Um, that was generated by people buying bad stuff, and then it would make perfect sense, but it got overturned um, af after the budget was made, so they're kind of in trouble. Um, but we would like to see, uh, <coughs> excuse me, so I'd like to see this happen in more places and have it become standard of care, because there is a significant improvement uh, in lifestyle choices uh, when you incentivize or tax one way or the other, okay? All right, so we actually have been on this uh, at the American College of Cardiology, and we actually put forward this resolution asking uh, to reduce consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages, try to get them out of hospitals and schools and the like, and um, we actually have gotten support from the AMA. And uh, as, as I mentioned a bit last night, we actually had a couple of these things go in for the last meeting uh, of the American Medical Association trying to improve hospital food uh, and the SNAP program, I, you know, the SNAP program, uh, what used to be called food stamps, uh, these are opportunities to get poor people to make healthier food choices. If you put some restrictions on it, people will say it's un-American not to give people choice, but we ought to be helping, uh, not hindering. Uh, and when you act, but just the fact that there is a SNAP program uh, gives people the options and say, do this on their own. So you, without even putting restrictions on it, the SNAP program is associated with lower health care expenditures because people actually can get more healthful foods. It's, it's an amazing effect. So with that, I'm going to turn over to just mention the idea of sugar addiction. I'm not a behavioral researcher, um, but um, I can Google and read, and this is what I came up with. That, uh, our, the problem that we have with sugar and the, probably the reason that it got turned down, uh, uh, turned over in, the, in Chicago, is that um, we've got this problem with our dopamine levels that go up with every sugar dose. And of course the insulin goes up and it drives the, uh, uh, the glucose intracellularly, you feel good for a little while, and then you start to have that sugar drop, you know, and you feel like you've got to have more, and that good feeling from the dopamine is going away and it drives you to do it again, you end up in this cycle. So what do you do about it? Well, there's a lot, and anyone who is concerned about this or concerned that your partner or somebody in your family has this issue, just Google that sugar addiction issue. You'll see websites like this one that will give you the uh, several points. I'll just mention that uh, they make sense, avoiding processed food, um, find other ways to make yourself happy, uh, use uh, more, you could talk about those artificial sweeteners. I'm still concerned about them in raising insulin levels, though. Uh, drinking a lot of water, uh, increasing your, or keeping your blood sugar stable by eating several small meals. All of it actually makes sense. A lot of greens. There actually is a, you know, some carbohydrate not refined in the greens, and uh, you're going to feel better about it. More sea vegetables. Sounds good. Uh, I would do, just avoid, whatever we can do to avoid sugar, we should. Um, one of my friends pointed out, um, because she actually loves um, sugar substitutes, and I was going through each one and figuring out whether or not they raised insulin levels, and they pretty much all did except this one. So I've never bought it, but it's called Yacon Syrup. Is anybody familiar with it? 
Okay, and you, you actually use it? Well, the data is pretty remarkable, okay? Um, and it's summarized here. It's the only time I've ever seen a sub sugar substitute that, was, that published randomized trial with weight loss. And so this was 16 kilograms, that's like 35 pounds over four months. Um, and now how does it do it? Anybody know? Increased defecation. Uh, yeah. And so um, you're not only decreasing the amount of, uh, it does not raise insulin levels, uh, which is a, going to be a big advantage, but it also causes some degree of malabsorption. And so uh, it probably does work. Now, I don't, I'm, you know, obviously weight is just one factor. I'd love to see what happens to cholesterol and everything else. Um, but uh, it sounds like at least there is an option if a person says, I must have things that are sweet, maybe that's the thing to, to do if, uh, as long as there's a bathroom nearby. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Mm -hmm.